Hey guys, this is Patrick from Stage, and today we have something that has been a long time in coming, and that's a review of the Microtik CSS 326 24G 2S Plus RM. I did that in one take. Now that's a long model number that you know looks a lot like the CRS 326 that we recently reviewed, but there's a key difference. The CSS has some cut down features, but it also has a much lower price. Given the lower price, we actually think that this is a switch that you should be looking at. We deploy these things all over the place. I have them at my house. We have them in the co-location facilities. Rohit uses them. A lot of the SDH team uses this exact switch just because it's probably one of the best switches in the $140 price bracket. The Microtik CSS 326 is a really compact unit. It's short depth. It fits on two rack gears. It's a rack mount unit. It's very similar in size to the CRS326, so it's pretty hard to tell the two apart. I mean, there's on the 24 one gig Ethernet ports, you're going to see three blocks of eight on both switches. You're going to see two SFP plus ports. They're going to look very similar. One of the key distinguishing differences is the fact that the CSS326 does not have the serial console port that you saw on the CRS series. If you look at kind of the older model, which was the CRS, 226, you're going to notice some differences as well. One of the biggest differences you're going to notice is that there's no LCD screen that you would have seen on the CRS 226. That touchscreen didn't really work great, but it was kind of cool to have status. But at the end of the day, if you're selling a switch for less than half the cost, you got to cut somewhere. Looking at the rear of the unit, there's not a whole lot there. Now, there are some retention prongs so that if you put the DC power input into the unit, you can actually kind of keep the cable somewhat secure. This works really well, but having a DC power brick or wall wart when you have a rack mount switch is actually a big problem. I mean, how do you even mount that thing, right? You have to go sometimes use twist ties. You have to have a shelf, something to be able to figure out how the heck you mount it. And a lot of times in zero UPDUs or one UPDUs, that kind of model where you have a wall wart just doesn't work. The DC power supplied by a wall wart, you don't really want to use that in a rack mount situation if you don't have to, because it's some are cumbersome to actually go mount into a one UPDU or a zero UPDU because they're just not set up for those. One trick we have is you can use a little extension cable and that actually helps fit the wall warts into the rack, but it still looks really ugly. So that's not ideal. We'd really like to see Microtech put these into the units themselves. Speaking of power, that's not the only power source. Technically, this has two independent power sources. The other one is the PoE input. So you can actually use power over ethernet and power the switch. That's really cool if you have these located in a remote location or if you just need a second source of power. On the other hand, a lot of times the one gigabit ethernet switch is the one that is usually providing power to PoE devices. So it's kind of a weird way to do it if you think about it. Still, in the $140 price range, you don't really see redundant power supplies. Internally, you're gonna see something that looks very similar to the CRS326 with the CSS326 because they're very similar switches in a number of regards. So we're gonna show you a couple little shots of that. Although in the CSS 326 series, we see the same ARM CPU, the kind of low end CPU that we have in the CRS 326 series. Storage is different. Instead of having 16 megabytes of internal storage, you only have two megabytes. And that impacts what OS you can actually run. On the CRS series, you could run router OS and on the CSS series, you can only run SwitchOS. Okay, now that we've talked a little bit about the switch, where do you wanna use these switches? I don't think that this is something that you wanna use in a mission critical area, like a bank or something like that. This just isn't the switch. You shouldn't be using $140 switch for that kind of application. Where the switch is great is actually in offices, in homes, in retail locations, you name it. Even in data center co-location facilities where you have one gig networking like baseboard management, IPMI out of band management ports that you need to go put onto a low cost switch and you want to aggregate them into an SFP plus port on a kind of higher end network switch. This is a great use for the CSS 326. We also did a review recently of the Microtik S plus RJ10 modules, and those are really cool. They allow you to take the two 10 gig SFP plus ports and turn them into RJ45 ports so you can use them as 10 G base T, but you can also use two and a half and five gig ethernet with them. Rohit has an entire series he's running on the different SFP plus to RJ10 or 10 G base T modules. We're gonna have a little link in the description that'll kind of give you an idea of where to look for that. 
Realistically, using those modules, you can actually get a switch that costs about the same as an eight port, one gig ethernet and two port, 10 gig ethernet switch, but you get way more with Microtik. There's one big difference between the Microtik CRS-326 and the CSS-326 that we're talking about today. The CRS-326 gives you the flexibility to run either SwitchOS or Microtik's router OS, which is kind of their OS that they use on all their routing devices, and they just use it everywhere. SwitchOS is really kind of focused more on basic switching features, and that is what the CSS-326 uses. Some people have preferences on one end or another, and older versions of SwitchOS were a little bit, mm, had some bugs that maybe you didn't want to have in your environment, but you know the newer versions are much better. One of the things that you do give up, though, for getting the cost savings is you know you're giving up the storage, you're giving up the capability to run router OS, which you know is really fine if you're just kind of using this as a basic switch, which is really what it's intended to do in the first place. Okay, talking about performance, we usually say that these switches are really layer two switches, and that's important, especially with switch OS. You're really kind of limited in what you can do anyway. Performance is going to look basically identical to the CRS-326 that we tested earlier, with the big difference is that you're really only kind of looking at the switching layer two portion. When it comes to power consumption, this is a switch that really takes, say, between 10 and 11 watts, kind of the lower idle end range, up to about 19 watts max. And that is a big deal. The reason it's a big deal is because you actually get a passively cooled switch, which means it makes no noise at all. For a lot of offices, for home environments where you just don't want the noise, that's an awesome feature. Okay, so wrapping this all up, this is a switch that we can recommend, not just because we think it's interesting, but because we actually use them. Rohit uses them, I use them. We have them all the heck over the place. We even have them in like deep learning GPU situations where you have a whole bunch of servers and you need to go figure out, okay, what do we do with all the management interfaces? This is a great application for something like the CSS-326. It's low cost. It keeps power consumption low in racks that you really need to conserve every little bit of power. Aside from the BMC uses, you know, you can use these at the edge. So if you have a whole bunch of devices that are one gig devices, such as if you're in an office and you have a whole bunch of wired devices, this is a really great switch to be able to go and aggregate everything up into SFP plus ports. And those SFP plus ports can go into other you know, kind of higher end switches. And we actually have reviews of several of those switches on SPH. We can link a couple of those in the description, but Microtech has a pretty compelling line at this point, especially at the lower end. Another really great use case is the ability to use the switch and the 10 gig ports for something like a NAS or a server or both, and then have a couple client devices that all sit on the one gig ports. That's a really easy use case where you may have some faster shared storage, that you want to go in and share among a whole bunch of client devices. It's a great use for the switch, very low cost way to do it. Okay, using an external power supply is really kind of not one of the great parts of the switch. We don't really like the fact that it uses a wall wart. We really wish that Microtik made this an internal power supply because that would make the package a lot more compelling. Sure, you do have PoE and technically you do have dual power input, which you don't really see much on this kind of end of the switch spectrum, but still, we think that's an area that can be improved. Although Microtik Switch OS went through some teething issues, it's really easy to use. And the fact that you have a web management interface and for a novice admin, it's pretty easy to set up and get going. That's actually kind of a great feature if you think about it. You don't have to learn an archaic CLI. And frankly, the Microtik Switch OS is nowhere near the bottom end of the managed switch web management interface spectrum at this point. It's actually not a bad solution. And that's kind of impressive given the fact that you're getting more hardware with this switch than you're getting with almost any other vendor. Okay, so overall, this is not the best switch ever made. However, it might be the best switch in the $140 price bracket, and that's why we definitely recommend this switch. Hey, thanks for watching this video. We're still kind of getting the YouTube channel going and getting all this sorted out, but we really appreciate you taking the time to watch what we're doing and give us feedback. So anything you have, feel free to put in the description. Also, while you're here, why don't you go subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out some of the other videos we have, or look at the STH main site. We have a ton of great content going up every single day from the team. Thanks again for watching.